Welcome to another episode of After School Kids Lab. Every Wednesday, we post a fun video of us doing something new. It could be a craft, it could be a science experiment, a skill, or a game. This week, we are going to be making journals using a basic book binding stitch. We'll also be decorating these journals, which is a lot of fun too. Here are some things that you're gonna need for making your own journal. First of all, you're gonna need some either thick paper or very thin cardboard. This is going to make the cover of your journal. There are many options for the type of paper you can use for the inside of your journal, but you're probably going to want something that has either a medium or thin thickness. You're also going to need some string. This is what we're going to use to bind our journals together. This string is kind of a basic string. It's not a thread thickness, but it's not yarn. It's somewhere in between. And that's what you're going to want for your journal string. Another thing that comes in handy when making journals is something called an awl. This is what it looks like. It's basically a very sharp utensil that we use to poke holes into the paper and the cover of your journal. This is the reason that we always say that our crafts and any project that we do for After School Kids Lab must be done with an adult's permission and supervision. Another thing that will require an adult's help is the use of a needle. So we're gonna use a very large dull needle for this project and that's what we are going to use to actually sew our book together or bind it together. You're also going to need scissors, and again, be careful with those. And a ruler. I have a large clear ruler, but you can just use any basic ruler. Another optional item that you can use, if you have any plastic folders at home, you can actually cut a guide for your journal making that will help you with creating holes in your journal that will be evenly spaced. There are many different materials that you can use to make a guide. That's just what I have used. One last thing that can come in handy when making your journals are paper clips. Paper clips can be used to hold your paper that goes inside your journal secure as you are binding it together. Last of all, you're probably gonna want things to decorate your journal. That could be markers, it could be colored pencils, stickers. We happen to have a lot of different stickers at home that we're gonna use. And one of my favorite things to use is washi tape, and we have a lot of that too. And basically what washi tape is, if you have not used it before, is just very fun decorative tape. It is used mostly for decorating, not so much for holding things together, but we enjoy it a lot. Book binding is the process of physically assembling a book, which ultimately includes the paper inside the book and the case or covering on the outside of the book. Book binding has come a long way since its introduction around the first century AD. Nowadays, there are many different ways a book or journal can be bound together, including the use of staples, glue, spiral binding, screws, sewing, and more. This week, we are going to learn a basic binding stitch to create a small journal. The first step is to cut out your case or cover and the papers within, also known as the signature. If you want to make a journal the same size as mine, you will measure out nine inches by six inches for the cover. You can cut out your cover and fold it in half. For the paper, I cut out five sheets of paper measuring eight and a half by five and a half inches. I used this measurement so I could use regular eight and a half by 11 inch paper, but you can make your journal as large or as small as you want. You just want to make sure the cover is about a half an inch larger than the paper inside it. Next, I clipped my papers together with paper clips and measured and marked three places for holes in the paper. Try to keep them evenly spaced from the middle and leave room on the edge when making the two outside hole marks. If you plan on making more than one journal, it helps to create your own plastic guide. I used a piece of old plastic folder and cut notches where I would need to make marks. You can also just measure the distance between the marks on your paper and make the same marks on your cover. Then I used my awl to poke holes into the marks on the cover. Make sure you are very careful when doing this step. Keep your hands and fingers away from the pointy part of the awl. Next, I poked holes into the paper as well. You can move the awl around in a circular motion to make your holes wider. This will make sewing easier. 
Before binding my journal together, I decided to decorate my cover first. You may want to do the same if you're using anything messy or using glue that needs to dry. I glued on two hearts made out of recycled paper that I had previously made myself. I used my favorite adhesive, Mod Podge, and let it fully dry before writing some of the things I love most on the cover with a marker. Once my cover was decorated, I was ready to sew my journal together. I started by cutting about a foot and a half of string and threading it through my large, dull needle. If you do not have a large needle, you can make the holes large enough to thread the string through without one. I started by going through the middle hole in my paper and cover. Leave a little string on the inside of the journal. Then I went through the top hole from the outside of the journal to the inside, making sure I pulled the string snug against the journal. Next I threaded the needle back through the middle hole to the outside of the journal. Last, I threaded the needle from the outside back to the inside of the journal using the bottom hole. Once your string is tight, you can tie the two ends of the string together. I recommend a double knot. Then cut the excess string and you're done. Now you have a mini journal you've made yourself using a fundamental book binding stitch that has been around for centuries. Now it's time for me to ask you some questions. After all, this is After School Kids or Ask Lab. Have you looked at the bindings of the books that you have at home or ones that you have checked out from the library? If you haven't, you should. It's fascinating how many different ways exist to bind books together. Let me know if you find any interesting bindings. Also, can you think of any other ways a book could be bound together? Maybe you could use yarn, duct tape, or ribbon. The possibilities are endless. Let us know about your After School Kids Lab experiences. You can post a comment, photo, or video on our Facebook page. We would love to hear from all of our viewers. Thanks for joining us for After School Kids Lab. We hope you enjoyed making your own journal. Next week, we are going to be doing box building. Until then, bye. bye.